And we're getting into the swing of things now, aren't we? We might be swinging some kind of cleaver about. <laughs> How hilarious. Midnight Hunt spoilers are truly upon us. And we've got quite the commander here. It's Wilhelt, the Rot Cleaver. Four mana for a 3-3 three, three zombie warrior. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if it didn't have decayed, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token with decayed. It can't block, and when it attacks, sacrifice it at end of combat. At the beginning of it, at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie if you do draw a card. So a nice bit of card advantage built in there, and a tiny little sack outlet. You know, sack outlet's always good in Commander. And you can turn all of your zombies into slightly different zombies that are a little bit worse, but still very, very powerful. Really, really cool. Getting very Bloodborne sort of vibes from this card. He looks like someone would be wielding one of those trick weapons, you know, massacring beasts, which is always a good time. If you like massacring beasts, or maybe you like watching my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be making one of these for every Midnight Hunt commander that's coming out, every single legendary creature. There's going to be a few, but we'll get through all of them together. And without further ado, let's have a look at Wilhelm. In at number five, we have Tombstone Stairwell, one of my personal favorite cards of all time. And this is such a fantastic card with this commander. The cool thing about this commander is it doesn't say non-token zombie, it's just any zombie. And Tombstone Cerebral has been errated, so the Tomb Spawn tokens it makes are zombies. So when all of your zombies die, your tokens, well, you get a whole batch of new ones that have decayed. So let's read Tombstone Stairwell. It has cumulative upkeep, so each upkeep you have to pay two, then four, then six, then eight, so on and so forth until everyone's dead. During each upkeep, each, not just yours, each player puts into play a Tomb Spawn token for each summon card in his or her graveyard. Treat those tokens as 2-2 black creatures that are unaffected by summoning sectors and count as zombies. At the end of turn, or if it leaves play, bury all of those tokens. So, the cool thing about this is you get all those tokens each upkeep, every single one, and we're going to stack our graveyard full of creatures. We're playing sort of a black reanimated deck, we want to fill it up. So if we have eight creatures, we get eight of these tokens, they die at end of turn, trigger our commander making us eight of those decayed zombies and then we do it each turn our army will just grow exponentially this card is phenomenal a couple of other really cool token ma makers noose graph mob six mana for a zero zero ends the battlefield with five one one counters on it whenever a player casts a spell remove a one one counter from noose graph mob if you do it creates a two two black zombie creature token and then when all of them are removed this dies but if we have a commander on the field, we get a decayed zombie. It just works fantastically well. Then we have Army of the Damned, eight mana for a sorcery. Create 13 tapped 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. Then you can pay 10 mana to do it all over again from the graveyard. So this is absolutely fantastic. If someone wipes the board, oh, okay, you've killed my commander and my 13 2-2s. Two -two but guess what? My commander triggers, sees all and die. We get 13 more 2-2s two that, yes, they die when they attack, but ooh, what a disaster. Then if we're playing a lot of token makers, Gleaming Overset is fantastic. Three mana for a 1-4, it enters the battlefield, and mass one, so you put a 1-1 one, one counter on an army you control, and you create a 0-0 zero, zero black zombie army creature token first, if you've not already got one. Then, zombie tokens you control have Hexproof and Menace. That's fantastic. The Menace is great for all of these little idiots They can get in. It can't just be chumped by massive creatures. They have to throw two creatures, and then all the rest of them will get in for damage. Really, really nice include. Then... If everything's dying, well, Rise of the Dread Man. Three mana for an instant, create X-2-2 two, two Black Zombie Berserker Creature Tokens, where X is the number of non-token creatures that died this turn. You can fatal it for a single mana, so you put it aside for two mana, and then you go, Whoppa! Here's my secret card, revealed. <laughs> and, you, and you now have an army of two twos flying in at you. So this is great, you know, any board wipe turn, you play this afterwards, you make loads of zombies, we play our commander. Then when all of these get board wiped, we get another army of zombies. It just keeps going. Then we've got Josu Vess, Lich Knight. Four mana for a four five zombie. Good enough. It then has menace. Ooh, ooh, threatening. And you can kick it for six mana when it enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, create eight two two zombie knight creature tokens with menace. And this is a knight that might come up on your test later. Crit Breaker, one mana for a zombie, pay two, tap it, discard a card, put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. 
that's cool, you know, a bit of a, a, a waste of resources turning an actual card into just a token. However, the reason I've included this is because it's so good with all of these tokens. Tap three untapped zombies you control. You draw a card and you lose one life. That gets around summoning sickness. So this can tap all the zombies for us as soon as they come in and draw us a ton of cards before they, you know, maybe die off Tombstone Stairwell or something like that. Which brings me on to my number four pick. And at number four, we've got lots of tokens. We've got lots of zombies. Well, we want to trigger, you know, our commander, get another raft of zombies let's sacrifice everything using things like god eternal bonded who he himself is a god no a zombie a zombie's the important bit there five mana for a five six with menace when it ends the battlefield sacrifice any number of other permanents and draw that many cards absolutely fantastic turning all of your token token tokens into absolutely fantastic cards because the rest of your cards in your deck will be great won't they so this not only can sacrifice tokens, but say you've got a lot of excess lands, sacrifice all of those lands. And when it dies, it goes to the top of your library. Blah, 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 blah. Who really cares? The main thing we're talking about here is sacrifice and outlets for that. Then we've got Corpse Harvester. Five mana for a 3-3, three, three, two, and tap. Sacrifice a creature, so one of your zombies to get another zombie. Search your library for a zombie card. And a swamp card. Reveal them, put them into your hand and shuffle your library. And it's a zombie itself. And the artwork, I love that sort of little, oh, what is going on here? I'm making a big ball of energy. <laughs> this is so cool. Tutors up any of your big zombies in the deck, like maybe Grim Grim, Corpse Born. Five mana. I, was gonna, I don't know what I was going to say. For a 5-5, five, five, it ends the battle for the tap and does not untap during your untap step. Sacrifice another creature, untap him, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Whenever it attacks, destroy tag creature depending on the controls, then put a 1-1 one, one counter on Grim Grim. Absolutely fantastic, really cool sacrifice outlet that you can use again and again and again. And it's also a big evasive, not evasive, offensive threat. My mind's turning to mush, the zombies are eating it. But this is great in so many ways in the deck, just excellent removal, and it's a sacrifice outlet. Then we've got What's going on? Oh, sorry, everything went wrong there. We've got Ghoul Collar Gita. <laughs> Five mana for a 3 4, pay a black, tap, sacrifice another creature, create X 2 2 black zombie creature tokens where X is sacrifice creatures' power. So, say we build up a massive Grim Grim, we can sacrifice it to get loads of zombies, and then when those zombies die, we get other zombies that are now decayed. You know, they're falling to bits, everything's gone wrong, the hands are falling off, they're just sort of. Uh, at you it's a complete disaster which brings you on to my number three pick and up number three well we've got lords you know we've got all these zombie tokens and we want to buff them and make you know good use out of them and diagraph captain is one of the best three mana for a two two with death touch on other zombie creatures you control get plus one plus one and whenever another zombie you control dies Tiger's opponent loses one life. So with all the sacrifice outlets and, you know, all the shenanigans we got going on, that ability by itself can just kill our opponents. Or we could just use the plus one plus one on our zombies, make everything massive and swing in for tons of damage. And this has death touch itself. It just does everything you want the deck to do. Similarly, we've got Lord of the Undead. Three mana for a two, two. Other zombie creatures get plus one plus one. Pay two and tap return target zombie card from your graveyard to your hand. Absolutely fantastic. Just dig out the best zombie in your graveyard. Recast it. Wonderful. Then a slightly unorthodox um, Lord here. Pontiff of Blight. Six mana for a two seven. Interesting stat line. And it's got extort. So whenever you cast a spell, you may pay a white or a black. So we're going to be paying black in this deck. If you do, each opponent loses one life and you gain that much life. Other creatures you control have extort, so every one of our tokens will have extort. So we can cast, you know, a one mana zombie, then extort it for eight mana, deal eight to our opponent, gain tons of life back. That in itself can just be a game ending play. And talking of game ending plays, cycling's coming in and doing it for us. Gem Palm Polluter, six mana for a four three zombie. Ooh. And cycling for a double black. <laughs> yes. So you discard this into a card. When you cycle it, you uh, may you may have target player lose one life for each zombie in play. Ooh! So with all those tokens, we're just going to ping someone out and we're going to draw a card. Or we could just play a six mana four three. You know, needs must, needs must. 
Then another sort of cool card here is Risen Executioner. Four mana for a 4-3, it can't block. Oh dear. Other zombie creatures you control get swamps one, so very nice. And you may cast it from your graveyard if and pay one more to cast it for each other creature card in your graveyard. So it could be quite pricey, but there's a couple of cards coming up that are all about casting from the graveyard. So this fits in really nicely, even if it is very expensive. And the artwork's lovely as well. He's got a nice hat on. Then there's Death Baron, three mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Skeletons you control and other zombies you control get plus one percent and have Death Touch. Ooh, is anyone going to want to block any of your zombies when you swing in with Death Touch? Really good, even on, you know, the decayed zombies that are going to die at end of combat. They're going to get in or they're going to kill something on the way out. Then finally, there's Rot Hulk, seven mana for a 5-5 five, five zombie with Menace. And when it ends the battlefield, return up to X target zombie cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the number of opponents you have. So in Commander, this is going to be reanimating three things. Incredibly powerful, very, very cool card. Which brings me on to my number two pick. And this is all about, well, this is the ultimate zombie in this deck. So we want to be recurring things over and over again, you know, because every time a zombie dies, we get a little worse zombie that's sort of fallen to pieces. So the best card for that is Grave Crawler. A single black for a zombie. It can't block, oh dear. And when you cast Graveyard, you may cast Grave Crawler from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. So here's the cool thing. So every time you sacrifice this to something, you get a zombie. So you're definitely going to have that zombie to recast it for one black. So for one black each time, you can just keep casting this, sacrificing it for whatever you want. If you've got a um, uh, Phyrexian altar that, you know, sacrifice a creature, make a colored mana, make a black mana, you've got infinite zombies then. Ooh, incredible. Or, you know, just whatever sacrifice out that you want. Grim Grim can grow massive. It's fantastic. This card just does so much work. Similarly, there's Ebon Death Draco Lich. Four mana for a 5-2 zombie dragon with flash flying and it ends the battlefield tapped. Mm, that's not great. But you may cast it from your graveyard if a creature not named Ebon Death Draco Lich died this turn. So we want to put a bunch of sacrifice outlets in the deck so we can recast this. You know, absolutely fantastic. The fact that it has flash means you can do it on your opponent's turn and just create a couple of you know, little idiots. It's it's wonderful. Really, really cool. Then the Scourge of Nel Toth. Five, uh, seven mana for a 6-6 six, six with flying. You may cast it from your graveyard by paying double black and sacrificing two uh, creatures rather than paying its mana cost. So they can be, you know, non-decayed zombies or decayed zombies. Yes, you won't get, you know, triggers off the decayed zombies, but that can trigger our commander, you know, if you're sacrificing just regular zombie token. Get tons of value, create loads of little decayed idiots. Wonderful. Really cool card in the deck. Then the Scab Ruminator. Three mana, five, six. Dear God, if this was half stone, everybody going crazy. Zombie Horror. As additional cost to cast it, exile three creature cards from your graveyard. That's pretty bad. But it has flying and you may cast it from your graveyard. So you can keep bringing it back over and over again, swinging for tons of damage. Then... Slightly different direction to take. Remember I mentioned uh, knights before. Hakon Stormguard Scourge. Three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. You may play him. I'm not going to try that name again. From your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. You need to put him into the graveyard. Maybe mill him in there or, you know, entomb him in. And as long as it is in play, you may play knight cards from your graveyard. He is a zombie himself, so, you know, you can bring it back with a couple of shenanigans we're going to talk about. And when he's put into your graveyard from play, you lose two life. So what zombie slash knights do we want to cast? Well, something like Grave Shifter, four mana for a 2-2 changeling, so it's everything. It's a knight and a zombie. is really, really good because when it enters the battlefield, you may return tag creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So any of your big threats that have, you know, died or whatever, you can buy it back. And with hack on, you can, you know, sacrifice the Grave Shifter, do it again. All sorts of fun shenanigans. And finally, there's Nameless Inversion. Two mana for an instant that's tribal. It's a shapeshifter and it's got changeling. So this instant is everything. It's, you know, an oof. 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 Target creature gets plus three, minus three, and loses all creature types until end of turn. So this, if you have enough mana, is incredible with hack on. Or just, you know, maybe we're going to talk about some things that can cast zombies from the graveyard. This can be a one-sided board wipe because two mana, just minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. 
That's a Knights of Zami commander you've got there. Oh, it's a zero two. Oh, it's dead. It's dead. It's gone. Big whoop. This card is fantastic, especially with Hakon and, you know, just in the deck in general. Which brings me on to my number one pick. We've talked a lot about the graveyard and things in the graveyard and all of those cards we just talked about, we can cast from the graveyard. So why don't we get some cards for that? River Kelpie is a five mana three, three beast. Ooh, what a beast. Whenever it or another opponent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Has persist, so when it dies, it'll come back and draw you a card. And whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. Now, that's really cool because I've only just noticed that it's player. So, if your opponent's, you know, flashing things back, you know, jump-starting things maybe, you're going to be drawing cards off that. But, with all those cards we've just talked about, this is going to draw us a ton of cards. Really, really awesome. And look at that artwork. Look at that. It's just a big sort of grub thing. I don't think it looks like a beast, but, you know, it's pretty cool. Similarly, we've got Laboratory Drudge. Four mana for a 3-4 at the beginning of each end step. Draw a card if you've cast a spell from a graveyard or activate an ability of a card in a graveyard this turn. So that's absolutely incredible with, you know, Ebon Death, who has Flash. We can do it every single turn. Sacrifice it, but moving back. And each time we're going to be making little zombie tokens. Then the Secrets of the Dead. Three mana for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. So if you want to put up flashback cards, this works with flashback as well. Just so many different directions you can go with. Having go Lich, five mana for a 4-4 four, four zombie wizard. So this is a zombie itself. <laughs> and pay one, you may cast target creature card in a graveyard this turn. When you cast that card this turn, having go Lich gains all activated abilities that card until end of turn. You can see some really awesome things with having go Lich. Like, one of my favourite decks I ever used to have is when um, Prophet of Crufix used to be legal. Having this and Prophet of Crufix on the field, well, okay, I'll pass to your turn. Untap all my things, you know, I can cast creatures at instant speed. That means you can cast everything in a graveyard at instant speed with this. Fantastic, absolutely wonderful, great times for everyone named me. My opponents didn't have a good time at all. But that brings me on to maybe casting things from the graveyard. And Gisa and Geralt. Geralt? Geralt. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four, human wizard. It's another zombie. Boo. It ends the battlefield. Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. So a nice way of building up, you know, some, some castables in there. During each of your turns, you may cast a zombie creature card from your graveyard. So rebuy anything that's exactly, you know, you've sacrificed. Maybe even your commander. If you've let it go to the graveyard because its commander tax is ridiculous, cast it for its normal casting cost from these fine young individuals. Then Liliana, untouched by death. Four mana for a four loyalty Liliana. Plus one, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. If at least one of them is a zombie card, each one loses two life and you gain two life. So we're going into a zombie direction, so that's great. Then, minus two, target creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of zombies you can draw. We've got a lot of zombie tokens, so we're going to be killing something with that. And finally, minus three, you may cast zombie cards from your graveyard this turn. Woo! That's pretty goddamn good. If you've got enough money, you can just rebuy an entire board's worth of stuff. And if you're playing something like maybe Rooftop Storm, which is a six mana enchantment that makes zombies cost zero, this can just be ridiculous. If you've got a sacrifice out there, you can just keep, keep comboing off, casting everything for free. And then finally, let's finish on a snake, as we always should. Gravebreaker Lamia, five mana for a 4-4 four, four with lifelink. It's a snake Lamia. And when it ends the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So this can get Hacken, it can get any of the other cool cards, Grave Crawler, things like that. And spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. So that's an excellent reduction to help with the casting of things. And those are my top five cards for this commander. Seems really cool, to be honest. Everyone likes a zombie deck, don't they? I do. Well, from playing it. From playing against it, not really. It's pretty, It's quite depressing. You wipe the board, everything just comes back again. I don't like that in the slightest. But if you've enjoyed this, please do like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to make one of these videos for everything else ever. So come and join me for the journey. Thanks for watching. Bye.